Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're here to really get into the stories that matter, giving you the insights you need. Today, we're looking at something pretty significant in global health. It's happening in Zimbabwe. We're talking about Africa's first human trial of a T-cell HIV vaccine, a potential breakthrough. Yeah, our sources are excerpts covering Zimbabwe leads Africa's first HIV vaccine trial. It sounds really groundbreaking, our mission. Hmm. To unpack what this trial means, you know, scientifically for society and what it says about African leadership and research. Okay, let's uh, let's dive in and unpack this properly. It's definitely a big moment. A lot of people have been watching for something like this. So, yeah, the main news is Zimbabwe launching this uh, this HIV vaccine trial. And it's groundbreaking, you said. It is. It's a phase one human trial. That's the very first time it's tested in people. And the main thing, always at this stage, is safety. Is it safe? Right. Safety first. Exactly. And then second, does it actually get the immune system to respond? Okay, so safety is number one, naturally. But beyond that, what are they hoping it will actually achieve? What are the um, the specific goals? Well, they've got clear sort of dual primary goals. First, like I said, rigorously checking the safety. That's absolutely fundamental. Mm -hmm. Second, finding out if it triggers an immune response. And here's where it gets interesting. They're looking at this in both HIV positive and HIV negative adults. Oh, okay. Both groups. Yes. So for HIV negative people, the main goal is prevention stopping them from getting HIV. Mm. But for those already living with HIV, there's a secondary goal. Mm. Can it boost their immune response to help them control the virus better? Maybe lower the viral load. Ah, so it's tackling it from both angles, prevention and potentially control. That's quite comprehensive. It really is. It reflects the complexity of HIV. And what really stands out is the location. This isn't happening in, you know, a big lab in the U.S. or Europe. It's launching from Utala Trust's Infectious Disease Research Laboratory in Zimbabwe. That feels, well, really significant. Africa's first ever human HIV vaccine trial. That's a huge statement, isn't it? It absolutely is. A mm. completely new chapter, really, for the country and for the continent in the fight against HIV. It signals this powerful shift um, towards local leadership and global health. So it's not just happening in Africa. Exactly. It's being driven by African scientists mm -hmm. for their own communities yeah. on their own soil from the very beginning, the design right through to running the trial. That level of ownership, that must be incredibly important. That's profound. Yeah. OK, so that brings us to the vaccine itself. What makes this one so promising? Because let's face it. Developing an HIV vaccine has been incredibly difficult for decades. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's been a massive challenge. So what's different here? It's a T-cell vaccine. Many listeners might think of antibodies when they think of vaccines. Can you explain T-cells briefly and why targeting them is, well, innovative for HIV? That's a great question. It gets right to the heart of the science here. You're right. Many vaccines we know, like for measles, even COVID, they work mainly by getting our bodies to make antibodies. Mm -hmm. And antibodies are great at catching viruses floating around outside our cells. Okay. But HIV is sneaky. Once it gets inside a cell, antibodies can't really reach it effectively. Ah, uh, okay. So it hides. Exactly. And that's where T cells come in. They're another key part of our immune army. You have killer T cells that can actually find and destroy cells that are already infected. Got it. Cell destroyers. Pretty much. Yeah. They're vital for clearing infections. Hmm. But the big problem with HIV has always been how fast it mutates changes its disguise constantly. Like trying to hit a moving target. Precisely. Makes it very hard for the immune system or a vaccine trying to train it to keep up. So how does this new vaccine get around that? Well, this T-cell vaccine takes a really clever, different approach. Professor Taro Mekadzanje, the executive director at Mutala Trust, explains it well. Instead of chasing the parts of the virus that always change, yeah. it focuses on, I'm quoting here, parts of the virus that are constrained either by structure or function. Constrained? What does that mean exactly? It means these parts are absolutely essential for the virus to work, to survive, to replicate. Because they're so vital, they have less room to mutate. Think of it like a machine, some bits you can swap but change a core part and the whole thing breaks. Ah, I see. So they target the bits the virus can't easily change. Exactly. It's designed to hit those critical, stable parts. It directly counters the virus's main defense, its mutation ability. It's a new strategy targeting key regions in the virus that are less likely to change. So going for the Achilles heel, basically, that sounds genuinely innovative, not just a small tweak. It really is a major pivot in vaccine design strategy. 
how revolutionary is that idea in, say, the wider world of virus research? Could this help with other viruses that mutate a lot? It's potentially very revolutionary, not just for HIV. Think about flu, hepatitis C, maybe even new viruses that pop up. Finding these stable, conserved targets has always been a huge hurdle. So if this T-cell approach works by focusing on these constrained regions, it could, um, well, it could open up new ways to tackle other adaptable viruses, too. Outsmarting the virus's evolution rather than just reacting. Exactly. That's why there's so much excitement. It's potentially a new way of thinking about vaccine design. Really fascinating stuff. Okay, so we've got the clever science. But how does a trial like this actually work on the ground? Let's shift to the practical side. Who is actually taking part? How big is this effort? Right. The logistics. Yeah. Dr. Constantine Mutata, a medical officer there, gave some specifics. They're aiming to enroll 120 participants for this phase one trial. 120. Okay. And that number covers all three sites. The main one at Mutala in Zimbabwe, plus two sites in South Africa. Right. And they've already started. The sources said eight people were enrolled already. And who are they enrolling? What kind of participants? The age range is 18 to 50. And crucially, as we mentioned, they're enrolling people both living with HIV and people who are HIV negative. To match those dual goals we talked about earlier. Precisely. And participants will be followed pretty closely for about 19 months. Wow. That's a long time. A big commitment. It is. They need to meticulously track safety, any side effects, and, of course, the immune responses over time. So the final results, you know, analyzing all that data... That will take even longer than the 19 months. Understandable. It sounds like a really thorough process. And it also says a lot about the local setup, doesn't it? The source mentioned they do have the capacity and people who are experienced enough that they can handle this complex research and lab work. Oh, absolutely. That capacity is fundamental. It shows this is genuinely locally led. It's not just, you know, location providing participants for someone else's study. Zimbabwean scientists designed it, developed it, and are running it. They're the clinical leads. Yes. It's a result of years of building up scientific infrastructure and expertise in Zimbabwe. It allows them to lead this kind of cutting-edge research. That emphasis on local leadership, it brings up a sensitive point, something that often comes up with trials in, um, in developing countries. You know, with this being the first phase one vaccine trial involving Africans like this, the question inevitably arises, are people being used as guinea pigs? <laughs> It's a tough question, but given history, it needs asking. It's a completely valid and really important question. Mm -hmm. And Professor Makazange tackles it head on in the source material. Mm. She points out a pretty stark reality. Only 2% of clinical trials happen in Africa. Only 2%. Wow. Yeah. Now compare that to Africa's share of the global population. We are about 20% of the world's population. So the real issue isn't overuse. It's the exact opposite. It's exclusion. Africans are often left out of research for diseases that heavily affect them, like HIV. Right, despite carrying a huge burden of the disease. Precisely. So her point is, it's absolutely essential for Africans to drive the science themselves. Otherwise, she says, they're just passively waiting for Americans and Europeans to develop vaccines and therapies for us. Which might not even be suited for African populations. Exactly. They might not be tested properly or be optimal for the specific genetic or environmental factors in Africa. So Professor Makazange insists it is absolutely essential for us as Africans to be part of the science and part of the development. Mm -hmm. It's not about being guinea pigs. It's about having agency, about self-determination, ensuring mm -hmm. solutions work for the people who need them. Taking ownership. Yes. And as she says, this is science for Africans by Africans. Zimbabwean scientists are leading it. They designed it. It completely flips that old, uncomfortable narrative. That reframing is incredibly powerful. So this trial, it's way more than just a scientific step forward, isn't it? Oh, much more. It's a statement about equity, about agency in global health, about building trust. Absolutely. It's a symbol. Yeah. A symbol of Zimbabwe's leadership, its resilience, its innovation in this long fight against HIV. Yeah. It's about taking control of their health future and contributing vital knowledge back to the world, but from a position of strength. A different model for how global health research should work. You could say that. Yeah. Equitable, collaborative, and importantly, led from within the communities most affected. That way, the research isn't just good science. It's relevant. It's culturally aware. It actually makes a difference on the ground. 
So wrapping this up, what does this all mean for you, our listener? Well, this deep dive shows Mbabwe's trial isn't just another study. It's potentially a huge leap in fighting HIV, maybe even for the whole world, because of this new way of tackling the virus's mutations. And maybe just as importantly, it's a powerful example of African science leading the way, of self-determination. It proves equitable research, led locally, is possible and vital. It really challenges our ideas about where breakthroughs come from, doesn't it? It really does. And maybe that leaves us with a final thought to consider. This trial is pushing scientific boundaries, yes, by targeting those constrained parts of HIV. But it's also fundamentally questioning where we expect innovation to come from. It highlights just how valuable locally-led research is, research that understands the context, makes you think, doesn't it? Whose priorities are really driving the global research agenda, and how does that ultimately shape the health outcomes for all of us? Something important to reflect on. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Zimbabwe's groundbreaking HIV vaccine trial. We hope it sparks your curiosity to keep exploring these crucial topics. Until next time, keep digging. 